Coverage you can count on continues with all you need to know. This year's Covered Bridge Festival is officially less than a month away. And Park County officials have been gearing up for it for months. News Sense Tucker White joins us live from Park County to tell us how this year will look. Good morning, Tucker. Good morning, John. Heather, I'm live in downtown Rockville, where officials have been preparing for the Covered Bridge Festival for months now. Now, this festival is one of Park County's main attractions, and officials tell me that canceling last year's festival was not something they took lightly. However, after a year of watching the county's COVID-19 rates and doing all they can to vaccinate those who want to be vaccinated, officials plan on having the festival like they have had every other year before COVID. But they will be taking a few extra steps to make sure all Park County residents and visitors stay safe. Now, some of those extra steps will be recommending social distancing when possible, as well as mask wearing and having plenty of locations where people can wash their hands. Reporting live in downtown Rockville, Tucker White, News 10. Well, today a local school is transitioning to e-learning. This is South Vermilion Middle School, where students will return to school in person on Monday, September 20th. The principal says there's been an increased number of positive cases in quarantine students. Other schools in the district will continue in-person learning. Union Hospital is experiencing overcrowding in its emergency room due to an influx of COVID-19 patients. Health officials tell us the holiday weekend played a big role. Right now, Union has 75 patients admitted with COVID-19. Only 65 of them have rooms. The other 10 are waiting in the emergency room. Newstown spoke with Union's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. John Bollinger. He is pleading with the community to get vaccinated. He says if we continue down this path, Union won't have enough beds for patients come mid-October. And Union Hospital has that portable medical tent outside the emergency room that you may have seen. Dr. Bollinger says they've used the tent sporadically, but they'll begin using it in earnest tomorrow. The hospital plans to use it for ER screening and triage. And with this, patients who aren't ill enough for admission could avoid entering the hospital altogether. A former Davies County Sheriff has died. The Sheriff's Office says Steve Cox died Tuesday. You can see a memorial for him here. Cox was Sheriff of Davies County from 2007 to 2010. He had a long career in local law enforcement. The Sheriff's Office says he proudly served the county from 1979 to 2017. The pandemic has contributed to the spike in drug overdose deaths that we've been seeing. It's important for those struggling with addiction to know there are resources available. Back in 2020, Vigo County had 28 drug overdose deaths. So far in 2021, there have been 27 drug overdose deaths, and this number is expected to increase considering it's only September 9th today. Experts say mental health and addiction go hand in hand. Recovery centers are working to help people fight their addictions. Some students in Vigo County may see delays on their bus routes. The Vigo County School Corporation sent an email to parents. It says bus transportation in the mornings and afternoons may be delayed. This is due to a bus driver shortage. All students who currently ride the bus will be transported to and from school, but there may be a time change in getting picked up and or dropped off. It's going to be very nice outside today. Upper 70s, comfortable throughout the afternoon. Sunny conditions, winds out of the northwest. Bringing in cooler air. Now tonight we're in the lower 50s. It's clear, it's cool, and if you go outside, it's chilly for you. You need a light jacket this morning. You're going to need one tomorrow morning as well. And then tomorrow we're in the mostly sunny area again. 80 degrees, still nice. Winds are going to change though. Out of the southwest, bringing in warmer air, impacting us Saturday, Sunday. Upper 80s, lower 90s by the end of the weekend. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Sunny conditions. Temperature is going to stay in the lower 90s. We're going to stay in the lower 90s Tuesday as well. An increasing chance of rain will move in Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday night, especially. We're going to see widespread showers, possibly thunderstorms, and you can see the direct impact that's going to have on our temperatures. We're going to go from the lower 90s, way above normal for this part of the year, to right at normal. Lower 80s on Wednesday, much more comfortable outside. So if you're looking to avoid heat, I would get outside either today or tomorrow because as soon as this weekend hits, Temperatures are going to return to more summer like levels and not the fall like levels, even though overnight lows we're going to go from the 50s to the mid 60s both Sunday night and Monday night.